Hi guys, welcome to this new session for CFA Level 2 Portfolio Management. Today we will be covering the remaining portion of the reading multi-factor models. So in the previous reading we covered the arbitrage pricing theory, we did some basic calculations and questions that could be asked from that ABD equation. Then we looked at some of the common multi-factor models that are used. We had the macroeconomic model, the fundamental factors model. Then we also discussed Carhartt model and statistical models. Today we will be covering the one major portion left which is the active return, active risk and the information ratio. So all of these three are fairly connected. So let's start right away with basic equations for information ratio. Now information ratio IR is active return divided by active risk. Now what exactly does active return, active risk mean? Well, if you look at some topics from level 1, we had a basic discussion about active investment style and passive investment style. That is precisely what these are also implying. So active investment style is one where you are constantly trying to beat the market, beat a particular benchmark. So if my portfolio is designed with the intention of earning me superior returns, superior risk adjusted returns in comparison to a benchmark, those additional risks that I'm taking, that is my active risk, and the additional returns I'm getting, those are my active returns. So active return is risk of portfolio minus risk of benchmark. This is known as active return. And active risk is the standard deviation of RB minus RB. This is how we denote active risk. There is also a common notion. This is denoted as RA and this is standard deviation A. So these are just make sure so far we have often, you know, uh, if we saw this symbol, we could have thought it's a return of a security A or return of a portfolio A, but it's not that. In the portfolio for CFL level 2, RA denotes active return. Similarly, this symbol denotes active risk. So this is your common structure of information ratio. Now, if you look carefully, this ratio would look very similar to another ratio that you have done, which is Sharpe ratio. Sharpe ratio was RP minus RF on standard deviation of portfolio. Now, if you look carefully, both of these are very related. Sharpe ratio is a specific case of information ratio where my benchmark is the risk free rate. So if I was to calculate information ratio using risk free rate as a benchmark, the numerator would become RP minus RF just like Sharpe ratio and denominator, think logically, would risk free security have any risk? It won't. This is the risk of my portfolio over and above benchmark. That's why it is active risk. But if my benchmark was risk free, can I say all of my risk becomes active risk? Yes. Why? Because risk free securities don't have any risk. So all the risk that I'm taking in the portfolio, it automatically becomes active risk because my comparison is not with any other benchmark. It's with the risk free security. So that would be denoted this way. So Sharpe ratio is not an entirely different concept. Sharpe ratio is just one specific case of information ratio where I use risk-free rates or a risk-free security as my benchmark. Now, I hope all of this makes sense. Let's take a small example to cover the discussion of how to calculate active return, active risk, and then information ratio. Let's look at the example. So here I have some data in the form of an example. So let's say you have been operating a portfolio for the last five years.
So for the last five years, I have the returns that I have earned on my portfolio. So I have earned 10% return in first year, 11% in second year, so on for five years. Similarly, I also have returns on the benchmark for the last five years. Now, in order to calculate the information ratio or any element of it, be it active risk, active return, the best method or the fastest method would be to create a third series which would represent the difference of both of these. So this should be your first step. There would be a few complications or few doubts some of you might be having. Don't worry, I'll clarify them as we go along. For now, we'll create a third series of just the differences. Now, this data, this is annual, so it is 10%, 10%, something like that. You would also get it in daily format, in which case it would be 0 0.0 something percent, 0.5%, 0.2%. .5%, so it all depends on the frequency of data. It could be daily. For your exam, it could also come out as monthly, it could come out as quarterly, it could even come out as annual. So the difference series would be something like this. So now we have our series of differences. For your exam, the faster method would always be to have this series calculated and then all you have to do is use the statistical functions of your calculator to calculate the mean of the series and to calculate the standard deviation of this series. 